In this interview with Insurance Journal's Charles Boyle, Jerry Sullivan, head of the Sullivan Group, speaks out on some insurance industry essentials concerning catastrophes, premiums, and the cycle. The industry seems to be facing a number of crises from catastrophes, uh, from premiums that have been decreasing or remain stagnant over the years. Where do you see just an overall view of where the insurance industry in general and the, the surplus lines portion of that industry might be going in the future? Ours is a cyclical business. It's always been a cyclical business. It probably always will be a cyclical business. And it by and large is a function of the amount of risk that is out there in the world. And we measure that risk. We know how much risk is there. We know how it's growing. Uh, and, and that rate of growth changes geographically, changes over time. But that's measured pretty thoroughly. And then you have the amount of capital in the industry that exists to deal with that risk. But the amount of capital is much more volatile uh, than the amount of risk. And what, what it really comes down to is if a lot of capital comes into the industry, uh, it's a simple supply and demand issue. If the capital goes up, pricing goes down. Uh, if capital goes down, pricing goes up. And right now we have, in U.S. property casualty industry, uh, we are at as high a capital level as we've ever been. Uh, in fact, our premium to surplus ratio is actually at less than one to one today. And we've been writing at less than one to one for oh, probably a good three years, uh, which is part of what's helped keep pricing down. But that's beginning to change as these losses come in, all the things we've talked about. It's a part of the change. I'm in my seventh cycle. I'm not sure I like to admit it, but it's true. And so a lot of the things that we're going through today, we've gone through before. This is not new. Now, every cycle has its own uh, characteristics, uh, has its own unique impacts. For example, this time around, there is an impact because of our financial difficulties generally. But that's not what really drives our cycles. What drives our cycles is that risk and capital relationship. And that's something to watch and pay attention to all the time. The cycle, as you've said, uh, has always been part of the insurance industry and, and probably will be. Could you describe a little bit more how a cycle works? Well, uh, the cycle is really interesting. And, and actually, I'm not sure I like the term cycle, but I haven't come up with a better one because that suggests that there's a, uh, a, you know, a fixed time frame and everything works the same way, which is just not the case. But understanding what goes through with the cycle, I think is very important for people in our business. Um, and in fact, a, a good friend of mine by the name of Paul Ingray, uh, who was a, a really excellent reinsurer uh, for a good number of years. But Paul did up something called the insurance clock and he takes the whole cycle from beginning all the way around to the end. And we use this as kind of a benchmark to tell where we are at any particular point in time and what's going to happen next. And by and large, what Paul put together in his insurance clock is absolutely excellent. Right now, we're someplace between five and six. He did the clock, you know, 12 o'clock at the top and all the way around. And it's really worth for anybody who's interested in this aspect of our business and just going through the insurance clock because it tells them a lot because he lays out all the pieces, what people do, what insurance companies do, what brokers do, what insureds do. That's what it's all about. When uh, you have all of this capital, what, uh, could you explain why so much capital has come into the insurance industry? The thing that's interesting is that the knowledge and understanding of all the working parts in our business. Ours is not a terribly difficult business to understand, but there are a lot of moving pieces. And unless you really understand and are watching those pieces all the time, uh, you may not really understand what's happening. For example, we've talked about uh, what U.S. property casualty commercial rates have done over, over the last numbers of years. Uh, I've shown, we, we do a graphic setting those out, I've shown that graphic to a number of people. People in the industry look at it and they usually say, well, gee, I, didn't, I knew it was bad, but I didn't know it was that bad. But interestingly enough, when you show that to people who often are investing in the industry, 
not professional insurance smiths, but people from outside the industry, I've had a number of them say to me, oh, that can't be true. Well, it is true. And it's, our business is a long-term business. And if we start cutting rates today, it's going to take several years before that begins to show up. And unless you're looking at the whole picture, you really don't understand what's happening. Now, there is a basic core amount of capital in the business that comes from within the industry. That's pretty stable. But there is an element that comes and goes. Uh, and usually the people that are putting in that incremental amount of capital, it's, it's an important amount, but it's still incremental, expect to cash checks, which is fine. I understand that. But sometimes they have to write checks. And when they have to write checks, they say, maybe I don't want to be there. We're coming close to the point where they're going to get to start having to write checks. And when that happens, oftentimes that incremental capital leaves the industry and goes to places where they don't have to write checks. I suspect we're going to see that over the next 12 to 18 months.